but it's up to you in terms of how you guys want to organize that. Okay, great. Well, definitely food for thought on that. Um, you know, I think it's important that as much as it's, it's just uh, written out, I mean, the reality is that, you know, all of us are working, and unless someone wants to write a report, I'm okay with it being verbally discussed here at the table because everybody gets to hear it all at once, and, um, you know, there is nothing else that's left out in addition to whatever else may be written out. So um, for now, I don't know that's the most efficient, but certainly I think serves the purpose of uh, informing all of us at one time and also <laughs> at, the, at the public at the same time. So um, unless there's, there's um, you know, a majority of the board that would like to have it in writing, I, for one, am okay with it just being discussed verbally. I agree. So, um, all right, so any other comment on that particular item? Okay, next uh, we do have administrative matters, item number 17 which is consideration and certifi uh, of certification of the 2015 follow-up report, which is to be provided to the accredit Accrediting Commission for the Community Colleges and Junior Colleges, ACCJC, which is part of the Western Association of Schools and Colleges, which is WASC. Uh, I know that um, anyone, uh, Dr. Schilling, you, you want to give us an update on that? I know it's, in, it's included in here, but anything else you want to add? Yeah, I just wanted to... Um say that since the last meeting, uh, Dr. Mixon and I have met with the Accreditation Committee, Faculty Senate, Coordinating Council uh, at the manager's meeting, and an attempt was made today to present at ASCC. Um, today, Andrea Wittig sent you minor changes made to the follow-up report reflecting actions taken at our last board meeting. Um, comments have been gathered, inputted, and two comments have been made on the Accreditation Discussion Board. Um, we're confident that the process has been uh, transparent and that the content of this refor uh, report reflects that, the that there has been broad participation uh, across the campus community. And we're asking that the board accept this follow-up report for submission to ACCJC in March 2015. Right. Move the item. Okay, great, thank Second. you. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, thank you. Okay, next, uh, we've already done item 18. Item 19, which is consideration of approval of finalist interview schedule and update on presidential search, uh, was reported out of closed session that we did um, come up with a final date for interviews, which is March 15th. Additionally, the, the poll is very strong, from what we understand, and um, the process moves forward. And just information only, in your packet there is also the schedule for some of the interviews okay, great uh, yeah it's motion to approve yeah. I move the item great second yes sir. all those in favor aye. Aye. aye okay great item uh, number 20 which is a second reading and consideration of adoption of a new administrative procedure 2200 which is committee of the board it's recommended that the new administrative procedure be adopted Move approval. John Paul have any questions on Excuse me. <laughs> you have, as you requested last time, if you'll notice in your book, um, you have option one and two because there was discussion about which method you would like to have to have these people um, appointed. So you need to make a motion to approve with option one or option two. That's right. My apologies. Okay. I would go ahead and move to uh, approve the item with option number two. I'll second that. Okay, uh, all those in favor? And that would be individual uh, board members be appointed? Which option? Two. Two? Option two. <coughs> right. The, it states the president shall appoint members <laughs> to the advisory committee with the approval of the board. Right, but would it be at as, as a slate or individual? Individual. Okay. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. So move on uh, with option number two. Item number 21. Item 21 is consideration approval of nominee for the triple CT uh, board election. It is uh, recommended that the board consider nominating an individual to serve on the uh, California Community College Trustee Board. I think Marissa, is that what you want to do? No? No, I do not. <laughs> I nominate Zurich Lewis. I have too much time to okay. finish my graduating. <laughs> okay. After that, then I'll consider it. Thank you, though. So you decline the nomination. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Great. Anyone else want to make a nomination? No? 
I'd like to nominate Mr. Bob Arthur. I think he's uh, well versed on many of these things. I think would do a great job representing the board. Thank you for the nomination, but I'm going to decline. Okay. See, there we go. <laughs> How about uh, Mr. John Dringer? <laughs> he's out of the room. It's easy to nominate. <laughs> John Paul, we're on item number, the last item, which is number 21, nominations for the Triple C team board. I decline. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell you, anyone want to uh, jump into that? No? Well, then I guess there's no nominations at this Guys, point. Relax. Right? <laughs> okay, so there we go. There are no nominations. All right. And I think that's it then. This, uh, um, you know, we move on to, I think we've covered everything. Wait, wait, wait. No, Just we're missing one, one last thing. Right, sorry. And we don't want to get called out on that one. Uh, <laughs> last item is item, uh, last item is reports and comments from district officials. At this time, the board of trustees will provide brief reports on meetings attended on matters pertaining to their service as representatives of the college board and pursuant to government code section 532.3D. So we will start off uh, with our right, uh, going all the way down our left of the shoe horse here. We'll start off with uh, Ms. Laughlin from CSCA President. Good evening, uh, no report, thank you. Next we have Mr. Namala, CCFF. Um, I have just two things to report on. Um, concerning negotiations, we had a um, um, lecture lab task force, that was the districts and the CCFF's um, joint task force. Um, uh, they completed its study um, end of last semester, and uh, they have recommended a criteria for what is an extensive lab um, that was developed. And right now, we're currently we are in talks with the with the district um, to implement a pilot program um, next academic year, and hopefully. Uh, full implementation beginning fall 2016. The second thing I would like to report on is the 16-week calendar. Um, this is a, a big issue for um, faculty for a long time, probably 20, 30 years. <laughs> uh, and it's an issue for students um, too. Uh, and um, the district and the CCFF have uh, formed a task force. Um, to to study that that issue, there's already a report uh, that was made in 2009. So um, the task force would review it, and we have a memorandum of understanding. And the goal is to implement it by fall 2017. Um, and, and in many ways, you know, if, of all the surrounding community colleges, we are the only ones on 18 week. Uh, and this will help students. So I, I hope um, that we'll move forward on this one. That's my report. Great. Thank you, Mr. Ramallah. Next week to have Ms. Llewellyn, Faculty Senate. I have no report. Great. Thank you. Uh, student mm -hmm. trustee, Flores de Sandiz. I have a couple things to say. Um, I just want to first um, acknowledge some people and thank people who um, help you know get this textbook contract passed um, first I would like to start with the students at large um, the Board of Trustees um, the administration faculty um, the AACC textbook task force and the contract negotiation team and last but not least the social equality club um, for bringing this issue to everybody on campus um, and some people like Dr. Contreras who's helped us and Dr. David Elfatel who did a negotiation for us. I think this is a great step moving forward for the next five years. We lowered the price of textbooks. We got a you know commission for the students at ACC and we opened up a discussion on the cost of textbooks as well. So the, you know, the work's not done just by signing this contract. We still got a lot of work to do. Um, on Friday, I have a meeting with Paula. She is um, the point person we're working in the library for the reserves. Um, in the summer, thanks to David Alfatel, we were able to get them extra thousand dollars on the textbooks reserves, and we've only spent about fifteen thousand. And they've been they've been conservative because we didn't know what the contract is was gonna look like. So we've been told that we have to spend the entire forty thousand dollars because it was allocated by AACC, <laughs> and the way they budget their money is that if 
if the item is allocated for a certain thing and they don't get it spent by the financial by the end of the financial year, then it gets um, put back into the reserve because it is a sweeper account. So right now we are going to meet and see what the the numbers are of the, the textbooks that we have purchased and if there's still a need to purchase more textbooks on that. So hopefully, you know, we can also discuss about what are we going to do with the next thirty thousand dollars that's going to continue going to the library, and also. Um, yeah, and with that, you know, continuing with the textbooks, I hope to work with AACC this year, for this semester, on implementing a textbook exchange program for students, you know, who want to sell their textbooks and want to, you know, network or exchange textbooks with students already here on campus. Um, and also, um, it wasn't mentioned in the contract because I think it was an internal district issue where there, you know, there was a the fall commission sales, and I think if we can use that money, you know, and invest it in the Kaleidoscope pro Project program. I think it would help students with their textbooks as well, um, especially in the math department or in any um, other subjects that the program deems is a necessity. Um, now on the on some other it's stuff that I attended in student government, and I attended um, the Safe Zone workshops. If you guys have attended those, those are really great. Um, we're gonna be having. Two more, I encourage you guys to attend those. They're um, eye-opening and you learn a lot. Um, I'll send you emails when the next ones are. I also want to announce that tomorrow there will be a mascot unveiling. I'm sure you guys have heard about that. Um, please attend if you guys are available. And that's pretty much it. Thank you. First of all, I want to congratulate those that were uh, working on the Follett uh, contract, and I was really happy to see that we were able to lower the price of uh, textbooks uh, for students because that is truly what we are here for. We are here for the <coughs> students, and you know, personally, when I was going to buy textbooks for this semester and for last semester, you know, the cost of textbooks is way too much. In fact, I tried to buy a 300-page uh, textbook or 100-page textbook that cost no 300 pages, hundred dollars, and I went to go and use my debit card to go and buy it, and the debit card said declined. And I thought, oh crap, someone must have you know, taken m money out of my account, or I spent it too much on who knows what. But um, it turned out that the uh, bank had believed that the uh, book was a fraudulent charge. So I went, <laughs> so I went, I went over to the Bank of America and told them, no, 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 this is how much it actually cost. <laughs> And I had to call Tennessee and fix it all. Eventually, I was able to buy the book and pass the class. But you know, it, it really is a testament to uh, the cost of textbooks when the bank even thinks that it costs that much. <laughs> so you know, I'm very happy that we, could, we were able to lower the price. And I hope that we can bring more students onto campus because of uh, the lower cost of textbooks. So thank you for the work on that. Um, I also had the privilege of attending the ribbon cutting for the Child Development Center uh, just down south with a couple of other uh, trustees from here. And it really is a beautiful area for kids that made me wish that I was a kid. Again, I know you still think I'm a kid because I'm 21, but <laughs> even younger than that. But uh, I also just started my last semester at Biola, and one of my classes there is the Fundamentals of Public Administration. So I hope that Dr. Lacey can sign off on some extra credit for my work here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's no it. Double <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, congratulations to everyone involved at the Child Development uh, Center, the, from the administration and staff, uh, former members of the Board of Trustees that were part of the uh, vision involved in bringing that to fruition to uh, Tilden Coyle and all of the design team, the architecture, landscaping contractors, everyone involved in that project. It's, it's uh, another jewel in the crown that is Cerritos College. Um, it was a real pleasure to participate uh, this again this year in Dr. Lacey's Falcon Leadership Academy, make a presentation to that group. There were 20 plus, 25? or so, 30 some people that were in the class this last, well, week ago Friday, and uh, did a presentation to them on board relations. It was um, a lot of fun, very enjoyable. And for those of you, well, in fact, I think all of you missed my first pitch, 
for the baseball, men's baseball team. The ball made it to the plate. I won't tell you how long it took to get there or how many bounces it took to get there. I did not go to the mound. This old right arm and shoulder said, not a chance. It just wasn't going to happen that day. And I want to say congratulations to Dr. David Betancourt, who had the privilege and the honor of representing Cerritos College uh, as he was chosen to conduct the Southern California School Band and Orchestra, the Honor Band, at the recent uh, National Association of Music Manufacturers, um, excuse me, Music Merchants, uh, at the recent NAM convention. That was a week and a half ago. It's a convention that is not open to the public. It is by uh, product and manufacturers only. It's a four-day event. I used to go to that all the time. It's just unbelievable to get credentials to go to that event. And David got to, got to conduct this group of young musicians as part of the presentation for these young people to show off how talented they are. And uh, that's just really cool. I just, David gets a great shout out from me. And that's the rest of, ends my report. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, last week I attended the State of the City in the great city of Lakewood. And again, it was a nice event where we talked a lot about um, the growth in uh, economic development, new restaurants, new businesses, as well as um, a focus on increased public safety. So that was always a good event. Um, last week too, um, I attended the LA County School Trustees Association, which um, the board voted me as their member a few months ago. And it was a really good, actually a really, really good event. Um, and I got to, again, meet several um, <clears throat> new K-12 K board members. There was mainly K-12, through but also a lot of, seeing a lot of old friends um, who, from the community college boards and talking about some of the issues that are going on. It was actually a very interesting panel. Um, the panel included um, the legislative representative from um, Patrick O'Donnell, who is a new assembly member from Long Beach, and he's actually the chair of the education committee. And it was a legislative representative from um, CCLC, as well as the California School Boards Association and the Government Relations Director from LACO. So again, they talked a lot about some of the issues that have already been brought up today. Um, one, of course, on everyone's mind is the state facilities bond, which again, we have talked about numerous times. Um, as we talked about, there is a signatures getting, it's going to be a $9 billion bond that they're hoping to put on the ballot um, in 2016. And the reason that they're going for it now is because the voter turnout was so low that they don't really need that many um, signatures to get it on the ballot. So, um, so they're aggressively working on that. And um, the CSBA person basically said that the governor does not want to see the state involved in funding anymore, that he thinks this is a local issue and that we should be locally funding it. So it's going to be kind of who goes first, whether the governor is going to change his position and um, get on board some of the legislative bills or if he's just going to have to um, deal with it on the initiative basis. Um, they did talk a lot about actually two bills actually have already been introduced on the subject. Assemblymember Holden had introduced a placeholder bill, and Carol Liu basically has reintroduced the Buchanan bill from last year, so she's also working on that as well. So again, I think the college needs to be very active on this. I know we're already working on this with our representatives, but I think the greater message too, it's a message that we share with our K through 12 partners too. It's a big challenge for K through 12 as well. So again, I think that's a, <clears throat> A real important issue. The other issue they talked about was that both um, the Speaker of the Assembly, Tony Atkins, and the Senator Pro Tem, Kevin Deligon, that they are really focusing on ending poverty and ending homelessness. They both came from very simple beginnings and they really feel that this is their crusade. And how we can link into that um, into that argument as community colleges that really having education is a way to end poverty, is a way to end homelessness. So that was um, from the legislative representatives they said is we meet with our legislators to give that message to them because that's something that's really resonating right now in Sacramento. Um, and the last thing we did talk about is dual enrollment as well too. Um, our next meeting, I think Andrea has a copy and pass it out to everybody. We're actually our next, um, uh, trustee association meeting is Thursday, February 19th, 
and the focus of the conversation is all about dual enrollment. <clears throat> um, Assembly member Chris Holden will be there and we're gonna meet up in San Marino and he'll actually talk a little bit about um, his vision. And again, this is another issue that we can work with our K through 12 partners. And they really focused on, um, talked a lot about the way that dual enrollment is a way to address the needs of our underserved students, whether um, undereducated, um, lower economic status, that this is a really a way to support them to more successfully complete their degree. So again, it was kind of a different bent on that. We talk a lot about dual enrollment for kind of the higher achieving students, but it really is a way um, to talk about how we can bring up the ones who need more help. Um, so I'm really interested in this issue and starting to learn more about it. And again, seeing um, this is another um, opportunity for us. So I wanted to see if uh, Dr. Lacey could agendize the discussion on that bill. It's AB 1451. And that is Assembly Member <coughs> Chris Holden's bill. So I'd like to go ahead and start the process to um, have the bill reviewed and brought through the shared governance process. And again, to have the board um, consider a position on that, as well as a resolution that we can share with our representatives, <clears throat> as well as the league. Um, and the last, I would not be remiss if I didn't talk to you a little bit about what's going on um, with the governor as it relates to climate change. Um, so as many of you know, that's one of his big um, priorities is climate change. And they're actually, pretty big implications um, on how they relate to community colleges. One of the things he really wants to do is he wants to control, um, cut petroleum use by 50%, so it's a very, very lofty goal. Um, and then another one is to um, increase renewable resources um, <clears throat> by 2030. And then the last thing is to double energy savings in existing buildings. So again, this is where all our work is gonna be done on LEED certification and really making our buildings much more efficient and how we can contribute to this goal to reduce greenhouse gases. <clears throat> the other thing too, I know we haven't really talked about solar panels, but that really is a way to contribute back into the grid. So I'm hoping that um, the sustainability task force, both the students as well as <clears throat> or share governance committee on that, they really start thinking a little bit about that, some ways on how we can contribute back to the grid because again, this is it. I mean, the future's here, it's gonna happen, so we need to jump on this train. And then the last thing <clears throat> the governor talked about was um, doing a comprehensive workforce training program as it relates to energy efficiency. Talking about the future workforce needs and energy efficiency assessment, installation, and sales. So again, I would like to see our faculty um, curriculum committee, whoever the appropriate group is, is really taking a look at this because again, this is another, this is an area that's coming and to try to tie our workforce needs with these goals. Again, again, I think it's just being uh, proactive in the future. So lots of good excitement. And one last thing too is uh, UC Berkeley actually just <coughs> completed the first comprehensive study of LEED certified buildings. And there are actually some really huge achievements in regards to the reduction of waste management, energy efficiency, um, and all as it relates to greenhouse gas. So again, I'll send Andrea the link if any of you are interested. But again, it's a pretty comprehensive study that talks about the benefits, not just to air quality, but also to energy savings. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Press, Ms. Doctor. Just emphasize at our um, last meeting at the CCLC conference, then on Monday we visit our we visited the legislators as Dr. as Bob had mentioned. Uh, we hit four main areas and Trustee Perez has articulated them very well, so I'm not going to repeat that. But we were talking to them about stabilization of funding, especially with our categorical programs. We talked about CTE enhanced funding. It cost much more for some of our CTE programs for specialized equipment. Uh, the concurrent enrollment programs, the state facilities bond. And we also talked about the expansion of the bachelor's program for the nursing <laughs> degrees. That's a real, I think, a hot topic and something we need to continue to pursue. Um, as you know, President Obama presented his federal budget. There's some things in education that we'll monitor and watch. Of course, the Americans College Promise is trying to get uh, free education for two years of free education for college, community college students. Uh, we'll see how that plays out in California because a lot of our students already received the enrollment, so we hope it will still benefit them in housing and cost and textbooks. Uh, also, fully funding the Pell Grant, which is very important because those can be used for those other expenses. So we hope that goes through. Um, simplifying the FAFSA uh, application, uh, it's very complicated. It's page after page. So if they can do that, that would be very helpful for our students. 
Um, also, to make the um, income-driven student loan repayment, modify that a bit, take about five years off of that, and also increase the federal TRIO programs. That's just a few of the highlights. Um, you know, it's kind of an uphill battle, as you know, uh, so we'll see. We can hopefully cheerlead for some of those issues. Uh, locally, I would like to say I met with the Norwalk Law Murata um, Search Committee for their new superintendent and talked a bit, little bit about what uh, qualities and partnerships with college sh should be. That was a good uh, experience. Uh, Trustee Avalos and I attended Southgate. I'll t let her tell more about that for the, yesterday for the city address. Also, we hosted our second community task force meeting uh, on Monday. Uh, I will remind board members, we had eight members present of the 24 that's possible. So let me tell you real quick, um, in area one, there are two openings. In area two, there are two openings. In area three, there's one opening. Area four, no openings. <laughs> area five, two openings. Area six, one opening. Area seven, three openings. And remember, you have the ability to identify folks and just notify us well in advance so that we can get it on the board agenda and we can take it anytime you guys have people you'd like to take forward. Any new applicants or advertisement? We, we haven't had any since, no. Can we advertise again? We can. Say, um, it's for the Community Advisory Board? Yes. You said no openings for Area 7? Four. You have three on Area 7. Oh, okay. I thought you That's said That's not yours, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're not Area 7. <laughs> you have one. One opening? Yeah, because you had yeah. somebody that... Yeah. Okay. Uh, then, uh, reminder, Hall of Fame's right around the corner. The invitations <laughs> are out. We've got some great people um, ready to do that, so please get your um, invitation or your... Um, checks in for that and your reservations and then I want to say um, of course the event was fabulous at the CDC but need to recognize um, the classified staff and the confidential staff put that together we saw over 300 people out there today and it was so exciting but remember all the hard work that goes into making that happen so um, tell them thank you and I will tell them thank you but it was a wonderful event it was so neat watching little kids running around but we we had an, uh, 300 people out there today and that was quite amazing. So thanks to all the staff that helped make that happen. Because we just show up and they do all the work. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and, you know, I will uh, briefly talk about just uh, some of the happenings. Yesterday we did attend the State of uh, City of Southgate address by our outgoing uh, mayor, uh, an individual who's been on that city council for 27 years, uh, very uh, you know, uh, I think an icon in our area, certainly with uh, our local unions, and more importantly, just being a man of character and really setting the standard in terms of uh, accomplishments, uh, dedication to a community, and just uh, really making history in terms of his dedication to his own uh, union. So looking forward to celebrating uh, his departure, uh, more for his family <laughs> who has shared uh, with us many of his his accomplishments and definitely his time but uh, in terms of what's happening in Southgate uh, the city of Southgate is uh, has uh, has many uh, redevelopment projects taking place a lot of development in terms of just bringing in more businesses increasing uh, the opportunities for our students uh, we are part of three community colleges uh, in our city uh, one of them obviously being Cerritos another one being um, Compton College and another one being LA Community College District. So we currently have actually two trustees on two different boards living in the same city, representing two <laughs> boards or two different <laughs> schools. Um, but it was uh, interesting to find out that uh, you know LA Community College District will be investing uh, more money into Southgate by expanding their current uh, Southgate Center to make it hopefully a new community college, a standalone community college. So uh, we in the Southeast are very excited about that because um, there are many students who travel to different schools to be able to attain their education. And it'd be great to have that a little bit more locally for them. As many of you know, most of them are first generation. And we do have concerns, or at least for the parents of those students, uh, where, their, where their kids go. And ultimately, I think Marissa, t uh, you know, hit the nail on the head because, you know, for many, many years, I personally have been talking about dual enrollment 
and really the issue with uh, the limits on funding and how that gets distributed in terms of ADA and also in terms of FTEs. So it's it's a more of a financial issue than it is, I think, you know, the approach that we should be taking is how do we get attainment of success for our students? And that's really where the discussion needs to be. So I'm excited that, you know, um, the uh, trustees is looking at that <laughs> and really taking more of a hands-on approach because I think it's a discussion that has been lingering here and there, but no one's really tackled it on. So I'm excited for that, looking forward to being at that particular uh, event or that next meeting on the 19th but um, you know going back to Southgate we do have a lot of things coming online and definitely looking forward to the expansion and opportunities for our folks to uh, attain jobs in our local communities and definitely to make improvements not just in terms of roadways but in terms of accessibility for our families for college attainment and definitely for uh, the opportunity to uh, you know, reinvest in our community, even with redevelopment going away, I think that um, the city of Southgate is definitely on the road and, and track to be able to turn some of those statistics around. Unemployment has actually gone down in our community by, I want to say 6%, which is pretty big considering that we had a 16.3% unemployment rate. So at one time. So uh, overall, the picture looks uh, very good. We have a city manager who's been with us for two years coming from Burbank has a lot of experience in just uh, bringing in businesses and definitely in uh, being able to manage, I think, a, one of the most complex real estate deals in the state of California. So um, it was, uh, you know, it has been great so far and we're looking forward to the positive progression that the city has made and really trying to continue to be, uh, as Mr. Gonzalez has said, our mayor, to set the standard for the Southeast in terms of transparency, accountability, and really uh, you know, working well with the community and outside sources to bring in revenue, but more importantly to bring in, create opportunities by bringing in jobs and uh, educational attainment for our community and our families there. So that was exciting to see. And I'll, I'll, and he only spoke for 30 minutes, which was unheard of, but um, that, was, that was a good thing. Um, He's a great guy, so looking forward to, to again, celebrating his retirement. I definitely um, encourage all of you, if you're able, to, to go, and I'll pass out the information at a later point. But today's uh, CDC opening, uh, grand opening for the students, I thought was uh, not only exciting, but I think, you know, again, a commitment and a testament to what we're trying to support here and is really learning at all levels and all ages. So I think to be able to have that, and the, I mean, the facility was beautiful, probably the best or most, you know, the nicest CDC I've seen in a very long, I have six kids and this is definitely the nicest one I've ever seen. So I thought, gosh, if my kids could be little, they totally come here. It was great, a beautiful campus. It's just great to be able to, to see the investment of everyone coming together, obviously for the right reasons, for the best reasons, and that's to foster love of learning uh, from our young minds and to support our students here on campus and our staff and faculty who bring their children to the center to continue to support our students being successful. So that was great. Kudos to everyone who participated from the folks that, you know, who did the designing to our taxpayers who contributed to allowing this to happen through their investment in our college. So kudos to all. And then, um, I know we, uh, Dr. Lacey, you talked a little bit about the CTE. I know there was a resolution out there that was sent to all the board members, and I can't remember what or, uh, what, it, what it was, right. Cabrillo yeah, Cabrillo College sent us something in terms of having our board look at it to address it and hopefully adopt it and support it because, again, I think we talk about the amount of money that goes into creating programs that ultimately support our students in the technical careers, and it is more expensive. And I think that, you know, we as community colleges really need to band together to let the state know that it's, an opportunity for our students to be able to have these choices, but it is uh, more costly and to the extent that we're able to tap into resources that allows us to continue to foster and support our students as they make these different choices in their lives to ultimately be successful regardless of whether it's a more academic bound or whether it's a more technical training bound. So uh, I would like to bring that to the board discussion table at the next meeting. I know everybody received it already, but I uh, would like to get some Maya input. Maya Walker is okay. working on Perfect. a resolution. Awesome. Yes, thank you, Maya. Um, but I um, want to be supportive of that. And then um, a happy Valentine's, everybody. I know we have another. I, I'm a, I celebrate Valentine's. That is my holiday. Every person in my staff has a, a different holiday. For me, it's Valentine's. And again, just um, you know, looking forward to um, sharing the love of family. And uh, with that, I know we have a, another board meeting next week, but it's on uh, other topics that uh, are not going to be um, discussed tonight. So that's it. I'm moving right along. Thank you. <coughs> Ms. Uh, Shinley. Oh, and by the way, thank you for um, allowing us to go with this today. 
Um, I attend the CCLC conference, but Dr. Lacey gave a very nice summary, so I don't want to repeat. <laughs> um, I attend the Chamber of Commerce at, for Artesia and uh, new office installation and heard a lot of uh, good, good compliments from the community members. <laughs> they told about our, our new building, very good. And I also had opportunity to uh, watch a uh, uh, Chinese opera with uh, uh, Trustee Zurich and his uh, beautiful girlfriend and our board president Avalos and her two daughters dressed in beautiful Chinese chi pao. <laughs> That was a highlight. Thank you. Always something to find in my closet. <laughs> um, good evening. Um, I'm so happy that we worked together collaboratively on the fall uh, negotiations and working with the student trustee and staff. Um, like, it's like being there from the beginning to the end, which is really nice. Um, it didn't take as long as the CDC. Um, so I would say go Team Falcons. We let's celebrate us working together and accomplishing something um, and moving this far forward. We're almost done. Um, I Saturday, um, one of my fifth graders in my class invited me <laughs> to a youth basketball tournament in our gymnasium. So I went to watch my student play for a little bit, and then I also attended the Foster Youth College Fair, and I met with, uh, with Foster Youth who represent a club of foster youth students who also lobby for legislation in Sacramento. And they were instrumental in setting up um, priority registration uh, and also extending the age um, for which the state can support them. And I asked, you know, how can we, how can I help foster youth here at Srias College? And they told me, you know, to support any um, foster uh, youth clubs and they, they have like a, a role model for a club. I don't know if we have one on campus or how we can have one to give support to them. Um, and they help each other. Uh, they become their own family together, which is really neat. Uh, it was a really neat camaraderie uh, between the young ladies I spoke with. I attended a Balfour City Councilman and I discussed the importance of religious freedom for all on Balfour <laughs> because of the federal um, discrimination case and the federal review of religious discrimination in our city against minorities. My constituent uh, and former colleague, Lourdes Martinez, um, her son uh, goes to Cerritos and she has concerns about him getting classes and um, provide, make it easier for students to, uh, to graduate and I think I forwarded that on to a staff member. Um, I just, I, my heartstrings were just touched today by the ribbon cutting at the CDC with the beautiful butterflies as we entered, yes. we opened the gate and uh, it was just beautiful, and it's why I'm here. That's why I'm a teacher. Why I'm a member of the board is, you know, learning is beautiful, and life is beautiful. I think of the, the Fellini. No, no, it's like the, the movie Life is Beautiful from Italy. It's just, it was just amazing. It was gorgeous, and I think they filmed it too. Like they had several cameras. I hope or you couldn't attend. You could see it. Um, it was just beautiful. Um, let's see. I'm not a perfect person. Um, I'm sorry if I've offended anyone, um, but I guess as a, I, my, I've been, I was brought up in a minority religion and I'm a minority by my sexual orientation. Um, I have been discriminated and I was almost killed and was almost stoned to death. Um, so when there's a question of fairness, like I jump up and I'm very passionate, like something's not fair, oh my gosh, like could it, you know, that really, you know, it gets to me quickly. I, I suffer like from a post-traumatic stress disorder from uh, being almost killed um, for expressing aff affection to someone I, um, uh, uh, I loved at the time. Um, so I'm sorry for my passion. Um, I, I, I want, I thought discussions we had at this board talked about fairness um, in the hiring process. And so I was very disappointed and I'm sorry if I was, um, may I express it more, more eloquently. I, I hope that everyone will be treated fairly because I have not been in my life and my life was almost taken because people were unfair to me. Two people tried to stone me and my boyfriend to death. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Dr. Salvar. 
Um, I also attended the CDC grand opening, and um, it was very special. It was special to see uh, multiple generations of um, alumni um, that were present, as well as the parents. I'd like to I'd like to congratulate and commend the staff that made it happen. Um, also, um, I'd like to ask Dr. Johnson to see if um, at the next AACC meeting, if there's any interest um, in having a AACC and board, you know, joint meeting between the board and um, the AACC. And if so, I would hope that as a board, um, we could work on scheduling that meeting and um, creating a shared agenda. I think this is a perfect time with the concerns that we, you know, first of all, I see the dedicated students that are here till 1030 bringing in snacks. I'm sure they're hungry and tired. And, and I think it, it'd be great to actually have that dialogue instead of public comment. Um, so I would hope that they would be interested um, and that we could kind of move that along quickly so we can start hearing their concerns and, and work better together. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, I'll try to be brief. Um, you have a yellow uh, sheet in front of you and that is the schedule for our kickoff for our uh, K-16 bridge pilot. Um, this We had our first event last night, which is a parents' night at Norwalk High School. We had 85 parents show up, and this is the beginning to help our students become to Cerritos more prepared. Um, there's much more to share, so I will hopefully be able to come back and share that at another board meeting, but I wanted you to see the schedule for the six high schools who will be participating in the K-16 bridge. Um, speaking of textbook costs, and congratulations to the students, especially for uh, this new contract. But I would be remiss if I didn't remind everyone that we are we still have another hurdle, which is publishers' cost. Follett is not only the middleman, and the publishers are who are setting the prices for our books. Um, to uh, Cerritos, as you know, is, is actively involved in the open educational resource movement, and on March 5th and 6th, we'll be conducting a, a faculty workshop for interested faculty who may not want to develop courses, but would be interested in adopting open resource courses. And the courses that will be shown are there's going to be 35 courses. Our goal is to get uh, adoptions that would impact 6,000 students, so we're going after high enrollment classes, and each of those uh, courses would uh, cost the students $5. The idea is that the textbooks would be, that were are adopted, there would be materials fee only, and it would be $5. So um, I hope that our faculty will support this, and you'll be hearing a lot more about this uh, this workshop. And finally, in case you haven't heard, I'm not sure if we have shared this, that the State of Education this year will be on March 31st. Everyone is invited, and thanks to Maya Walker, uh, Alex Padilla, uh, from the who is our Secretary of State, will be our keynote speaker. We'll have student speakers, uh, faculty, and administrative speakers all talking about student completion. So I hope you'll put that on your calendar. That's it. Thank you. The CDC is awesome, and I just, I know everybody said thank you, but I just wanted to uh, thank all the folks that were involved with getting that thing uh, designed and built, and also the people that are going to be taking care of it uh, that, to the grand opening and also in the future. So uh, that uh, facility is uh, not a simple one to take care of, uh, uh, but we're, we're up to the task, and uh, uh, the facilities and maintenance and custodial folks will do great work in that. I do want to comment uh, just briefly. Um, uh, Trustee Perez mentioned sustainability. So we do have two task force uh, from the Facilities and Planning Committee, one working on a sustainability plan, one working on an integrated energy master plan. Uh, I'm hoping to bring something forward in May for board approval on those plans. Uh, uh, one is more advanced than the other, but I just had a working meeting in my office yesterday for three hours on the integrated energy master plan. It's 183 pages. Uh, we have a state-of-the-art look at each one of our buildings. Uh, and the energy uses on each of those buildings and how to look at energy holistically on this campus, which includes a whole gamut of things. Uh, Edison funded this uh, project. Uh, it's been a collaborative event with the Chancellor's Office, Cerritos College, Edison, and uh, Harley Evelis Devereaux, the architects behind it. And um, uh, certainly Edison uh, is um, being driven by the Public Utilities Commission to meet those goals that uh, you mentioned, and uh, that's all part of this plan, so I'll be excited to bring it forward. It's not quite ready yet, but uh, after tomorrow's session, I'm looking forward to within a few weeks getting a, what I think will be a 95%, 98% draft uh, 
just a tweak uh, because it, it needs to be ready to uh, go to our website and the Chancellor's Office website and to bring it forward to the board for others to use as a, as a template and, and resource guide. So uh, we're, we're uh, moving forward on that and I'll be uh, interested in bringing it forward as soon as we can. Thank you. And Mr. Johnson, Dr. Johnson. Thank you. Um, I do have copies of the flyer for the college fair that Mr. Dreyer um, referenced that happened this past weekend, and I want to share those with you um, just because they're indicative of the really incredible work that we do through our financial aid, um, EOPS, and particularly the LINK program. Um, you know that we were one of the colleges in the state who was an early adopter of special services for foster youth. Um, the Chancellor's Office encouraged that those um, partnerships be created through the financial financial aid areas because there was so much interest in making sure that not only were there services, but there were financial resources provided for foster youth. So this LINK program, this leaders involved in creating change, um, has had very strong infrastructure from the get-go. It involved making sure that the foster youth students had contacts in the various services on the campus, and it has involved partnerships not only with um, student services, but also with the Foster Kinship Care Education Program. So we have in the past partnered um, regionally for holding a college fair. This we did again this past Saturday, uh, and you can see a real emphasis on um, preparing the um, young people with information about FAFSA and other student uh, financial aid resources. So uh, big kudos to uh, the financial aid, the EOPS, and LINK folks who uh, put all that together. It was a terrific effort. Um, also, um, club information days have been underway, and I wish I could have just taken some panorama shots for you and brought them in, um, because it is striking how dedicated the students are and, and the way we need to think about it, of course, is in terms of the connections that student organizations provide for students to have a real, um, a real sense of place in their college. And you, if you saw these tables and these booths, I mean, there was one thing after another. They were packed with materials, with ways to engage, with information, and of course, lots of people. And so we should be really proud of, of what the student organizations are doing for encouraging and supporting um, student engagement. Um, we've been uh, working in student services, uh, continuing on the student success and support program, what we refer to as 3SP. We have collaborative working groups that are working on all that. We uh, had a good meeting this week on enrollment priorities. We um, are required to prepare for the next set of regulations that will go into effect that will be meaningful for us, which will be BOG fee waiver um, uh, limitations. They go into effect for fall 16. Um, we're, of course, already ahead of the game on the requirements that go into effect for fall 15, which is our mandatory assessment orientation and counseling, which we've been doing for a few years anyway. So, um, but some very good work going there, including our preparations with Sinosure for online uh, student orientation components and online success workshops, intervention workshops, um, orientation to assessment workshops. Um, it's just giving us more ways that we can get information out to students. Um, also in that area on the closing the achievement gap, student equity planning, we have a shared governance committee that uh, proposal will be going to the coordinating committee this coming Monday. Went through faculty senate yesterday. I want to acknowledge Michelle and the senators for uh, the really helpful comments and suggestions. Executive council embraced those this morning and we appreciate um, the good work. So we'll have a really good product going to a uh, coordinating committee on Tuesday. And, um, and I think th that's my report. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dr. Gillarney. Thank you very much. I just wanted to draw your attention to some activities that will start next week in celebration of Black History Month. There's a group of individuals who put together a committee that developed a series of programs that will start next Tuesday. They were advertised on the Daily Falcon. So as part of our diversity activities and efforts, we've identified various months to celebrate throughout the year. And while all these activities were not uh, planned by EEOAC members, some individuals from our group did participate. And Maya Walker, who is I believe still here, was very actively involved in that as well as others. So I appreciate their work to do that to celebrate Black History Month. There is also an organizational meeting for Women's History Month activities. And I think that you'll find that they put together some very um, informative and educational activities for that month also. And it's always going to be a good day when you have a choir of youngsters singing to you. So thank you, everyone, for your work at the CDC. 
I just want to uh, acknowledge the great work that was done on this uh, accreditation report. Uh, Dr. Schilling uh, and um, all those that were involved really need to be commended. It's uh, been a long process, and this is really the culmination of that. And uh, you guys are doing a great job of really getting past that and, and doing the things that need to get done. The policy committee is really way on its way. It's working very well to address the issues that uh, were raised, and I think you're, uh, you've really done a tremendous job. In addition to uh, the seminars that you're having, uh, the board presentations, like the one you had today and the one last meeting, really fulfilling the things that uh, you were um, <coughs> that were referenced in the initial report. And so, uh, again, congratulations! It's a it's a great uh, achievement. Thank you. Thank you. Great. With that, can I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? I think that's it. I think that's it. But, yeah, everybody got a chance to talk. Well, thank you everyone for being with us here tonight. Uh, thank God it's uh, still uh, today, not tomorrow. <laughs> Have a good night, everyone. <laughs>